Hi again and welcome to case study two. In the previous video we looked at creating a simple gradient to combine a foreground and a, a sky exposure. In this one we're going to do a very very similar process, in fact the identical process, but we're going to spend a little bit of time discussing uh, some of the, the finer points of that blending process and secondly the timing of creating our foreground exposures. In this one we can see that the shot was taken on a falling tide and the waves were coming in and crashing over this fairly intricate set of lava boulders in the foreground um, on the black sand that we can see here. The, this area here, uh, I mentioned this in one of my earlier seascape photography books, I waited until the wave had crashed over here so that that line of that boulder going against the, the, the side of the frame was broken up by the white of the wave. And what it's done is it's helped to isolate this large boulder on the left. Had that boulder been more visible, it creates uh, less separation of this subject and it, it wasn't such a clean composition, in my opinion. Um, now, the, I took many, many exposures of the way the waves were moving around these boulders and coming on over the top, and this was the one that I liked the most. As we can see from the histogram, we have highlights that are blown, and yes, you know, I, I could... Lightroom does a great job these days of pulling back these regions, you know, to create something that doesn't look so bad, but at the same time, it's not the same as a beautifully rich uh, sky full of saturated colors and lots of detail in these in these uh, highlights. So what I aim to show you here is something that's a little bit more complex from what we did in case study one, but without, um, without moving into the, the more advanced areas that we'll be coming to later. Something we didn't touch on in case study one video was equalizing or attempting to equalize the look of both the files before blending. So what I'm going to do here is with the first file selected, I'm just going to apply a preset that I use for uh, two things. One is it provides a little bit of sharpening with an amount of 50, a radius of one, details at 50 and masking set at 10. And the second thing it does is it ticks these two boxes. Uh, which enables profile corrections, which, which basically corrects for lens distortion, and secondly, removes chromatic aberration. There is no chromatic aberration in this file, but there may be chromatic aberration in this file, particularly around this edge. Where you have a highlight and a shadow joining, it's quite common to get chromatic aberration. So with those two selected, I can sync my settings and we now have two files that are corrected for sharpening, uh, corrected for chromatic aberration, and corrected for lens distortion. Now, what I want to discuss is if I go ahead and blend these two exposures, the foreground is significantly brighter than the sky. And what I want to do is create a file that's holistic, you know, Tonally consistent is the phrase that I like to use. So what I'm going to do in this file is have a look at this histogram and work on the assumption that I can brighten it a little. So I can brighten that by a stop. Let's let's say let's say 0.85 of a stop. I'm not getting to the stage of that being pure white, but what I can do is open up some of these shadows a little bit, but without creating any halos. And we end up with a file that's just a little bit more detailed and a little bit brighter than the, the previous version. But also, we want it to be able to blend in with this one a little bit cleaner. This one, too, can do with a little bit. We can maybe down the exposure a fraction. 
continue with our shadows being opened up a little bit. Pull our whites down a fraction. Maybe open up our blacks a fraction. And by doing this, by doing this in Lightroom, we're working in a non-destructive environment because by the time we move it into Photoshop, anything we do with that TIFF file, that 16-bit TIFF, is destructive. You can even get to the stage where you can say, right, I'm actually going to pull down this sky a little bit with a gradient. And even though we've still got, well, they're not blown anymore, but they're certainly fairly featureless. Um, we now have two images that are tonally much closer together than they were at the start. From now on in, we're in very familiar ground. We edit and open it as layers in Photoshop, and we're going to repeat exactly the same process as we did the first time. But the difference being that in these two exposures, we've gone to the added, um, the added uh, step of trying to create two images that look as if they're meant to go with each other. So again, our two layers, create our simple mask with our gradient tool, we draw our line, hold down the shift key, and we now have a situation where we have two images that really do go together quite well. However, we will notice that we are, because we have moving waves in this situation, if we look at the, the bottom file, we've got this lovely breaking wave, but on the top file, we're getting pollution from the top image. Um, and what we need to do with this is use a black brush at a reasonably low opacity of, say, 23% and flow of in the 30s and go over and paint over with black the area, the precise area, where that top exposure is polluting the bottom exposure and creating a situation where we're getting these artifacts coming through. And it doesn't take long. You just need to be a little bit patient in terms of how you deal with it. But if we now zoom out, we can see that we have a nice clean section from the bottom image that is not being polluted by the top image. We can just carry on with that. I mean, you know, the thing with any of these types of things is you can just in increase the opacity a bit more to, to do it a bit quicker. Um, the thing with this is to just take your time and make sure that you have no areas of the top image moving in on the bottom image and that way we've got a nice a nice uh, bit of ocean there with the sun focused on it very nicely and reflecting and creating some uh, quite a nice look. Now again this image is, is far from finished uh, there's quite a lot of work still to be done but that's not the purpose of this video so for now let's uh, bring case study 2 to a close um, with just a slight summary of what we did before, which was just a bit of time in Lightroom to create two images that looked more like they were supposed to be close together um, than they were previously, and the, the end result is obviously a far more attractive looking file. So that's the end of case study two.